Hey YouTube, it's Eloise, also known as Miss E2609. Um, I'm coming to you guys today with my first ever vlog about um, VSG or my journey to get weight loss surgery. So I have been um, struggling with weight loss for about 10 years now and um, I never really wanted to get weight loss surgery. I feel like this is like a last decision. Um, let's rewind and go back on some history. So I've been struggling with weight loss for about 10 years since I had my first son. Um, yeah, there was a lot of depression, marriage gone bad, all of that, that kind of compounded the weight gain and then, um, also the uh, postpartum depression and whatnot so yeah as the years gone by it's kind of like a blur of what happened just because i was in such a cloud of um depression not really understanding how much i was overeating not really being aware of the junk that i was feeding myself not really you know just trying to make it through the day by day like i don't yeah <laughs> that part um but anyways like i was saying i um i have been struggling with weight loss and it's not about up until about maybe two years ago where i've gotten my depression under control and came became more aware of what's going on with my body and um throughout those years that I was going through different things, I started having different health issues. So um, I started trying to um, work out more once I became more aware of what was going on with my body and just felt more present after I got my depression back under control. I, um, what is it? I started working out, I started doing the, um, workout boutique style workout where um it's a group workout at one of those storefront gyms where they do high intensity group workouts loved it i mean that trainer the trainers that were at that place called damn sports fitness they would kick my butt and i loved it i would sweat from places that i knew could sweat okay i had to come home and be sure to take a shower because your girl was dripping <laughs> um then you know i graduated from working out doing a group workouts i moved on to working out know, in the gym <clears throat> my favorite workout was the stair climber and then the free weights um that stair climber i would just put on my favorite whatever it was and just drag my legs up every stair every stair boy did i sweat from that one too but anyways yeah as time went on i wasn't losing the weight like even throughout some of my depression i did try every now and then to lose weight Ooh, excuse me that's itching my forehead anyways i did try to lose the weight and try to start a workout regimen but because of what was going on with me i just was easily defeated so I have to say life got in the way again and um I did work out for about almost a whole year like faithfully stuck to the meal plan that the personal trainer put me on <clears throat> excuse me and you know your girl went from like 260 to 222 and your girl was feeling herself because you know the shape was coming back but then i hit that plateau and that plateau defeated me knocked me down and then other things with my parents started happening and really <clears throat> got in the way of me being able to work out on a routine basis i know it sounds like excuses but this was just the reality that i was living at the time so it's been about a year since I fell off from working out. Not to say that I don't do any physical activity at all. Like I go to little 
workout groups here and there. Um, there's this little kids fitness thing. Well, not kids fitness thing, but family fitness thing that I like to go to with me and my boys. And, you know, it's not intense or anything, but it does get me moving. It does, you get that little nice sheen on your forehead because you're working out a little bit. And then just, you know, being up and busy, I am constantly moving. So it's not like I don't do anything. It's um, more of the issue with the self-control of how I eat. Now, sometimes I feel like I overeat. I know I emotional eat still. I know I stress eat at work still. Um, those, you know, pastries inside the cafeteria and the cafe at work are like the easiest thing to grab. And, you know, you feel some type of comfort. You know, people are always buying stuff that you shouldn't be eating. And, yeah, I know that... Um, getting VSG would um, help with curbing what I can eat and how I can eat to like not rely on me with this self-control thing and so you know it wasn't immediate I'm sorry this video is gonna be everywhere because this is just like the first time I've ever doing this so I'm trying to get all my thoughts out to let you guys know how I got to this point so, um, like, VSG wasn't the first decision. Like, I have started working out, then I got defeated, I started looking at other things to help me lose the weight. Um, one of them was the medically assisted weight loss, where you drink shakes all the time. I knew that wasn't going to work for me because I like the taste of food too much. I need <laughs> to be able to chew food, like... And then also the medically assisted weight loss program that was available to me. You had to be at a meeting every week. And I'm like, I got kids. I got to come home and do homework. I got, I'm in school. I got to come home and do my own homework. You mean to tell me right after work I got to go to somebody's meeting? I'm like, no, I'm sorry. You can probably get me once a month. I can probably get a babysitter. <clears throat> Then I looked at the gastric balloon. Gastric balloon was, um, there's a lot of people on YouTube with the gastric balloon. It's a very interesting thing and I was highly considering to pay for that. But coming up with that $10,000 just wasn't a reality for me. Um, and then I started talking to my doctor about it because we did have a few conversations here and there about, you know, my medically um well just here and there about what I can do to start losing the weight she suggested to me well have you ever thought of gastric sleeve I'm more like no and so um she started in with well you know it's probably covered under your insurance because you qualify based off of your co comorbidities that you already have existing um I have high blood pressure and mild sleep apnea and I have a BMI over 35. So um, <clears throat> she referred me to the orientation because I have Kaiser. Kaiser requires that you go to this lengthy orientation to understand what you're going getting yourself into. Um, they make you meet with a nutritionist, they make you meet with a surgeon, they give you a goal weight. Um, then they also make you meet with a psychiatrist. They want you to go to the support group at least once a month, um, so on and so forth. So I did the orientation and I said, oh, I can do this. This is what I'm looking for, a tool, a tool to help me, a tool to keep me from overeating because if you overeat with VSG, you get sick. Well, you girl don't want to get sick. Your girl don't want to be throwing up. That No, I did that while I was pregnant. I'm cool. I'm not throwing up. Mm -mm. <laughs> so, um, it's something to help restrict and something to help change the way you eat and change the way that, I mean, although you can mess it up, it's a possibility, but it all depends on your level of commitment to yourself. So then, um, went to the orientation said okay I think I can do this 
Um, I got scheduled with the surgeon for my pre-op appointment just about a week ago. I went to go see him and we discussed even more things in detail. Like they want to know your like history, your surgical history, history of like medical illnesses, blah, blah, blah. We got into that and he was actually surprised about the additional research that I have been doing. I'm like, hey, this is going to be a life changing thing. So I need to know what I'm getting into. I want to hear the bad, the good, the ugly, the, you know, nasty, the side effects, the, you know, the dumping, all about the dumping syndrome and people's at different um, experiences with that. And I figure, okay, I have discipline enough to know if I do this. I'm gonna get sick if I do that I might not feel too well not having anything to help me with that if I go in this cabinet here and eat this box of graham crackers that I have in here that I bought a while ago I can kill the whole box of graham crackers and without G BSG or without anything else other than my um, conscience I can kill that whole box of um, graham crackers. I also have some Oreos in there and I got a gallon of milk. <sighs> Your girl can go to town on some Oreos and milk and not even realize that it's gone. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So because I have these pre-existing comorbidities that get worse with time, and I have a really hard time with self-control, um, overeating, emotional eating, so on and so forth. I um, said, okay, I think we can do this. And even the surgeon thought it would be a good idea for me. My primary care doctor thought it would be a good idea for me. I even got my mama on board, okay? And my mama looking at her pre-existing, well, her comorbidities that run strong in our family, um, it made me all the more ready to say yes to this surgery. Um, my mom, she has high blood pressure, kidney disease, um, diabetes, uh, all of that, you know, that comes with being over overweight. And I have a sedentary job where I sit at a desk all day. So, even if I do work out for an hour a day, eight hours of eight to nine hours of the day, I'm sitting on my butt doing nothing but typing. So it's becoming more and more clear to me as to why I would benefit from this uh, surgery. So um, I even found out that I actually know somebody at my church that has had this surgery and I was reassured by her, you know, there's certain things that you can and cannot do, but nothing has changed for her and she's happy. The girl looks amazing. Like, I didn't know she had the surgery. I just know she had been working towards eating, towards a healthier lifestyle. I mean, we all, that's one of our church's goals is that we're physically healthy in addition to mentally healthy and spiritually healthy. And the girl is just shrinking before my very eyes. And she looks wonderful. So that's how I got to um, where I decided I think VSG would be the right thing for me and my future in the way of weight loss. Now, um, like I said, um, I am 200 and... At the time of my pre-op weigh-in, I think my highest weight was 260 and that was last year with the work towards working out and trying to lose the weight on my own. I got down to 220, but because I fell off the wagon, I got back up to two, at the orientation they made us weigh in, I was at 248. At the pre-op, at the pre-op appointment, I was 253 because it was literally right after Christmas and the boyfriend makes some bomb ass gumbo every year. So from like Christmas to Thanksgiving, I was eating gumbo and rice. <laughs> so that's where I'll, and then somebody made me this wonderful, wonderful peach cobbler. 
Your girl was going to town. People brought senorita breads. To, oof, if y'all don't know what senorita breads, you missing out. But yeah, all the stuff that makes me smile, they brought it. Oh, oh. can I say oh again? Anyways, yeah, I had all of that. Oh, and I had a sweet potato pie and there was pecan pie. Yeah, I had all of that. So going from 248 to 253 actually wasn't that bad for all that I did eat so I have um after the pre-op I was told well during the pre-op visit I was told that I um needed to get down from 253 to 245 to first I need to be at 250 to schedule the psychiatry appointment once I get down to 245, they will schedule me for my um, appointment, my, my, give me my surgery date. Um, after the pre-op appointment, because I was so close to the surgery appoint, um, surgery wait, your girl went into high gear, got back on her um, meal plan that she knows works for her in the way of dropping the weight and cut out the sugar i cut out the coffee because one of the coffee one of the um requirements is that you're not allowed to have caffeine in your system it irritates your stomach um i cut out this so i said i cut out the sugar i cut out most of the starches i need i tried to go without the starch and i just find myself hungry so you know i try to do the high protein high um lots of vegetables um fat such as cheese and stuff and then the carbs or starches i should say to um kind of help fill in like there was one night i tried to go without the starch and i woke up at one o'clock in the morning i was hungry like the hunger woke me up that's how hungry i was so um yeah kicked in in the high gear made sure i got my water in made sure i was um eating all this thing eating the way i needed to so i know it's not the hospital's um scale that counts when they're weighing you in but my scale has been going down every day because of what i have been eating so i'm hoping to call the um surgeon's office again on Monday to see if I can get in like maybe on Wednesday to do my way in because the scale of last read that I was down to 244 and that's my bathroom scale it's not reliable I mean it's reliable to a certain extent I'm not gonna say it's like 10 pounds off giving me an imaginary um thing saying that I'm that much lighter but it did match what I weighed in at at the day of the surgery pre-op appointment. So I'm imagining that I'm somewhere within the realm of 245 right, right now. Your girl went in and got the weight off. So I know lots of people will say that, oh, you're copping out. Oh, you're doing this. You know, you're doing that. You're doing it because you want to be skinny. It's really not about how I look. Like, I know I talk about myself. I got a box fully. But I still got curves, dude. I still got these curves. I love my boobs. <laughs> I love the curvature of my waist. Um... So it's not even that I'm doing it to suddenly like take a magic bullet and get skinny. It's more of a, I'm worried about the progression of these, um, these illnesses that even with me working out and trying to eat right, they're not getting better. They're not getting better and as time goes on. And the longer I take these medications that I have to take for my high blood pressure, the harder it's gonna be on my body, um, which leads to kidney disease. And looking at my mom's situation, 
I don't want to have kidney disease. I don't want to go to dialysis. I don't want to do all that. I don't want to be like my grandmother. I don't want to be like my great grandmother. I don't want to give myself insulin shots. <clears throat> I don't want to do any of that. So, um, I think I'm going to curb myself from doing all that by going through with this surgery. So I hope this video has given other people out there um, some encouragement to know that they're not alone with their decision to go through VSG um, or weight loss surgery and that it's okay that you decided to do this um, I had to really pump myself up because <clears throat> people really knock you down when you come out and say, oh, you're getting weight loss surgery, especially when you say it to people that you really thought you could trust. And so, um, the one person that it really, that I really wanted my support from was my mother because, um, if in her mind, if her opinion is the one opinion in this world that I may care about. Like, what she thinks may hurt my feelings a little bit. <laughs> I ain't gonna say a lot because my mom's a harsh critic sometimes. But, you know, winning her over and letting her ask the questions that she's concerned about, being that I'm her only child, and, you know, I help her because she is disabled and she fears that you know something might happen to her precious baby girl um i'm glad that i've been able to bring my mom on this journey lightweight with me to the things that she can attend because you ain't coming to my psychiatry appointment mama just if you see this video no you're not coming to my psychiatry appointment sorry um but uh letting her feel comfortable in the fact that i'm getting this because i don't want her to worry everybody else can worry i don't care <laughs> but um just letting making sure she understands what her daughter is trying to get herself into you know i begin myself into some crazy stuff sometimes i've been known to do some crazy things but this is the one thing that I think is the best for me in my future and being here for my kids and seeing my grandkids when that happens. They only 10 now, so, you know, we got some time. But I want um, people to know that it's okay. It's okay that you're choosing this way. You didn't choose, I'm not one of those overweight people that is lazy. I'm not one of those overweight people that um, is like, I don't know, like there's overeating and then there's gluttony, I feel. So I overeat, but I'm not overeating just because it's in front of me. I overeat because my body's not telling me I'm full. Um, I overeat because I have depression. Um, you know, food does excite me, but it's not the only thing in my life. There's a lot of other things that I want to be able to do. And this weight is not allowing me to do it. Um, but yeah, so, um, like I said, this is my first video. Forgive me for being everywhere. But I just wanted to share my decision and my journey, begin sharing my journey of where I'm at with VSG and maybe with the hundreds of other VSG videos out there that this is just one more video reassuring the next person that what you're deciding to do with your life and your body to make things better for you is okay. All right. Thank you guys for listening to me. Thank you for listening to my nine-year-old in the background trying to distract me from my video. All right. Have a great day. Bye-bye.